Good morning. morning. It's good to see everybody this morning and always good to be in the Lord's house as we give God our thanks and praise for God's goodness to us this day and every day. Let us rise as we are able as we begin our worship together with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercies endure forever. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor in the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering song, Christ is Alive, like Christians sing, number 389.
let him have a crack at the sermon. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the readings. Today's first reading is from the 11th chapter of uh, Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is a portion of Psalm 54. We'll read it alternately between myself and the rest of you all. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. 
I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble and my eye looks down upon my enemies. Today's second reading is from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and you do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something, you cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And in three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. Mark does not give us a good view of the disciples. Of all the Gospels, Mark's portrayal of the disciples are that they are dim-witted and slow to learn. And today's gospel reading is a good example of this, because this is now the second time Jesus has told them that he's going to die on a cross and be raised from the dead. This is the second time Jesus is teaching them what it means for him to be the Messiah, the Son of Man, the Son of God. And they simply don't get it. In fact, they seem to pick up the exact wrong message. I mean, think about the scene, right? Jesus has just taught them about the sacrifice that he, sacrifice he's going to make to show humanity what it means to follow God and to love God. And instead of understanding it even a little bit, they're arguing amongst themselves who is the greatest. 
They are puffing out their chests, giving a list of all their accomplishments as disciples. I hope when you heard this text this morning, you were a little annoyed with the disciples over how slow they are to learn. I wonder if you've ever tried to teach someone something and they just can't seem to grasp it. Not only that, but they seem to go out and do the exact opposite. Must have been very frustrating for Jesus to have these particular disciples. However, can we claim to be any different? We, you and I, we should know better. We live on the other side of Jesus' death and resurrection. We experience the wonder and power of Jesus' self-sacrifice. And yet, all this time later, we still don't get the lesson. Because in our lives, we want to be the greatest. We want to have the most money, the best house, the most friends, the perfect family. We want to be the smartest person in the room and be the best at our professions. In ways that maybe we will not admit to ourselves, our others, our lives are about being the best. And I would argue that Jesus' lessons are even harder for us who are living now in the United States of America in 2024. Because we live in a capitalist society. We live in a culture that teaches us that we need to get ahead. We need to be competitive with one another. We are told in small and large ways all the time that life is a competition against others that the point of life is to work harder and be better than other people. And what proves that you're a better person is that you have more money or fame or adulation. In Jesus' time, this is actually not how it worked because what you were born into determined how you would live. If your father was a fisherman, you would be a fisherman. If you were born a woman, you would work in the house and have children. You were a second-class citizen with absolutely no rights whatsoever. Things were prescribed. People lived and died in the same town in which they were born. Jesus' was t- teaching was radical because it put the idea of who was on top and who was on bottom upside down. It calls us to rethink, what does it mean to be great? What does it mean to be the best? And it doesn't match what we think. This is Gus Waltz. He is the son of Tim Waltz, who... I'm sure all of you know by now, is running to be the vice president. Gus has a nonverbal learning disorder as well as anxiety and ADHD. And at the Democratic Convention, Tim Walls was giving a speech, and at one moment in that speech he said, Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you are my entire world, and I love you. Gus Walls got excited and expressed his love and gratitude back towards his father. He was crying and saying that he loved his dad. And at the end of the speech, the two embraced. A wonderful moment. I would argue a conservative moment of a family that loves and cares for one another. And also not political, just human. Even if you don't like Tim's Wall's politics, which you have every right to dislike, I would hope that you would applaud him as a father and a husband. Against my better judgment, I do participate in the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. And on that platform, and others, Tim Walls and Gus Walls were attacked for this display. Some people on Twitter thought it was unmanly. Someone wrote, quote, stupid crying son, unquote. Another person wrote, if Walls represents today's American man, this country is screwed. Quote, meet and sarcastic, meet my son Gus. He's a blubbering, I can't say the word, the B word, boy. Or, get that kid a tampon already, unquote. Or, finally, you raised your kid to be a puffy beta male, congrats. Now, I was at Calumet when all this was happening and I had to ask people who I was with what it meant when they called Gus Waltz a beta male. I wasn't familiar with that insult. Someone explained to me that a beta is the second letter of the Greek alphabet, and alpha being the first. So instead of being alpha, he was a beta. So I guess they call men who love their wives and children and and can express that betas, because some people think that that makes you less of a man. I don't know if any of the people that said those things are Christian, but if they are, they have not read today's gospel reading. They have not learned what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples and us. That being the first 
is not the point of following Jesus. In fact, it's not the point of life. Loving and caring for others is the point. Serving others is the point. Jesus is actually saying something even more radical because a child in the first century Palestine was not considered important at all. They were not even considered as human beings. They had no rights, they had no protection. They were seen as future workers. That's about it. They had very little standing as worth someone's time or energy. Now that's changed in our day. We revere children. We see them as importance of our future. We take them seriously. <clears throat> but Jesus is telling his disciples and us that we find Jesus at that place in our society. We find Jesus in the places that are often considered less than. We find Jesus in the beta males of our society. We find Jesus in the ones who others deem unworthy. We find Jesus in the ones who others call names and outcasts, those who are living on the margin, those who have no protection from law or society. Now, I am very rarely one of these people in the world who's left out of anything. Um, I'm aware I have lots of advantages in this life. I have been blessed to be born into a good family, to have good children, a job that I love, uh, friends and family. But if you've been part of our church for any amount of time, you'll also know this about me. I am a crier. Yeah, I cry a lot. I cry at funerals, weddings, baptisms, movies, songs. I cry when I'm proud of my children. And sometimes I cry for no reason that I can actually discern. I inherited that from my mother, who was also a crier. Now, my dad, too, was not afraid to cry. He cried when the situation was appropriate. He, when Vicky and I were getting married and we told him that we were going to take his last name, he cried. And I'm happy to tell all of you this morning that I am a beta male. And I am proud of it. I'm proud to love people enough to share my emotions. I'm proud that I was and always will be a mama's boy. I'm proud that I love people enough to cry when they die. I don't think that shows weakness at all. I think it shows that I love and care for people. Not only that, but my faith in Jesus Christ confirms that our true selves are not found in being great over other people. True graceness comes from self-sacrifice, love, and tears. Our true and best selves come when we embrace what the world sees as weak. So as you go about your week, remember to embrace those who others see as weak. Remember to cry out of love for your family, your friends, your fellow disciples. Remember to hug those you love and tell them that you love them. Embrace the children, the refugee, the trans child needing a kind word, the child living in the closet thinking that God hates them, the person who lives on the railroad tracks, the lost and forsaken, the betas of this world. And when we do that, we will welcome Jesus Christ into our lives. Amen. Let us rise as we sing our hymn of the day. God, we gather as your people for all the children, and it is printed on page 7 in your bulletin. The words are printed.
After having heard the good news, let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge living in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. Instill in your church a spirit of humility and curiosity that we embrace all who seek you. We pray especially for the ministries of hospitality and faith formation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you shape the world so there is more than enough for all. Curb our habits of overuse and guide us toward more sustainable sources of energy, food, and water. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, your peace brings justice and solidarity. Encourage peace among peoples, tribes, and nations. Heal divisions in our country and local communities, that together we might cooperate for the good of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, you draw near to you all who are in need. Bring healing and wholeness to all who suffer, especially Bill, Nicole, Lois, Marie, Jack, Sherry, Jack, Janet, Peter, Liesel, Joanne, the Oliva family, and David. And we pray for the friends and family who currently grieve for Melvin, Nancy, and Amy Lee. And we remember our homebound, Betty Lee, and especially the men and women in the service, Joshua and Daniel. Transform economic, political, and social systems that oppress vulnerable people, especially systems of structural racism and generational poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Transforming God, you accompany all through changes and transitions. Help us to see where you are calling this community to new ways of living the gospel promise. Assure us that even as change brings loss, it also brings hope and life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you embrace us on our final pilgrimage from this life. Accompany all who have died, console those who mourn, and at, and at the last, show us the way to eternal life in you. Hear us, O God. Here our own prayers may be offered aloud or in our hearts. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also Let us share God's peace with our neighbors.
Let us rise and we sing our offering hymn, Accept the Lord the Gifts We Bring.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. I'm sorry, I'm going to have everybody just sit down for a minute, and we're going to let the, the, the paramedics come in. So everybody can just sit down. We're going to sit down. Uh, we are, it's okay. Everybody's going to be okay, but we're going to have the paramedics come in. We have a little bit of an emergency. So while we wait, uh, we're going to sing a hymn. Anybody have any requests? Well, let's just open the book. We're going to sing, yeah, where's Betsy when you need her at? Six three one six three one.
let us pray. Oh, good and gracious Lord, we ask you to be with Angelica. We ask, we give you thanks for those who are called to the healing arts, that they may take good care of her in the hospital, and that she may return to us quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us rise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to draw us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is our teaching and tradition that we celebrate not at the Lutheran table, we celebrate at the Lord's table. And the Lord invites everyone who's here, everybody watching online, to share in this feast of God's mercy and God's love. You may be seated.
now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with the dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements this morning. The first is that uh, the Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event where uh, the men uh, walk down Main Street in Concord in high heels in order to help raise money for the um, crisis center here in Concord is happening on October 2nd. So the Concordia Cloppers, as we like to call ourselves, will be uh, once again walking. So if you would like to participate in that, uh, please sign up, and if you can't figure out the computer stuff, let me know and I'll sign you up. Uh, Oct October 6th, two things are happening that day. Number one, if you haven't yet sent in your picture, Jim Doyle is going to be here to take a picture of you for our picture directory. Whether you want it or not, right? Whether you want it or not, we're taking your picture. Number two, actually someone after the first service said, I'm going to send a different picture of me when I was younger. Uh, don't do that because we might not know who you are. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then also on October 6th, the Grand Estate Organizing Project is going to be with us to do a training with us on how to uh, do advocacy at the State House. So uh, please come out for that. That's going to be right after the service. Uh, October 8th is, and I apologize, I did not have my act together, so I apologize to Anne uh, for having to delay her Bible study, um, but we both thought it would just be best to delay it. So October 8th is going to be the Bible study on Zoom. Um, there's an announcement in your bulletin that tells you everything you need to know about it, so please read that. Also, if that's also in the vine as well, so come out to that. Um, uh, yeah, that can wait, that can wait. Um, uh, I'm sorry to say that Betty Lee Smith, who's been on our prayer list as a shut-in for a long time, she died this week, so keep her family in your prayers, and the funeral's going to be October 12th at 1 o'clock. I believe here at Concordia, but I have not spoken to the family. I just know the, the time and day. Finally, uh, most importantly, this is our week to host Family Promise at St. Paul's Episcopal Church downtown. We have two families that are going to be with us this, this time. Um, so thank you to everybody who's already signed up to either cook a meal or stay overnight. We still need uh, someone to do Tuesday dinner and Saturday, we need a male overnight person. So if you could do either of those things, uh, please let me know. Tuesday night dinner or Saturday, uh, we need a male overnight. Uh, you can sign up, but if you don't want to sign up and you just want me to do it for you, you can just tell me after church and I'll, I'll take care of that. And prayers for Angelica, and thanks to all those who acted and did all the right things, and <laughs> she'll be fine because she's in good hands. So thank you all for that. All right. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless and keep you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us rise as we sing our sending song, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, number 815. 